So, so the three to one ratio, uh, or any ratio, allows me to move the camera in different modes. Like right now, I would be the equivalent of a short jib arm. I move a foot, and it's three feet of displacement in the virtual world. You're going to lead him in. He doesn't know where he's going. You're going to show him his way through the through the tree of voices, mm -hmm. and then you just kind of oh, respond to what uh, what she shows you. And With CG, you can play a novelistic story played by a single actor where they appear at 10, at 19, at 45, which might be their actual age, and at, at 100 if you want to. And they play, they play all of those. And maybe, maybe their actual age they play photographically. Maybe at 100 you play them with age makeup or you decide to do it with capture. What we're, we're saying is an actor is an actor. You can't have somebody else do Marilyn Monroe. It's like you've seen in the clips. CGI is a 21st century version of prosthetics. It's still the actor within who's driving the performance. Right. This is a tool that, that takes the guesswork out and it takes a process that has been limited. Technology has been a limiting factor when it came to visual effects. This allows technology to be an enabling factor. where You're able to see something that's not there and do your job of creatively composing something. I need to get a filmmaker back in the role of working in these highly technical type of films. Again, this is what's actually happening on the stage while you're seeing that. So the background characters that we're not interested in, we just have black robes in at the time, so we're concentrating the performance on the foreground characters. The background characters will be done separately and then put together later on. And then again, we'll do a pass here just to check that everything's working to make sure all the hair and costume simulations, all the interactions are all doing the right thing. A demonstration of one of the systems that was used on Avatar. Um, it's um, a 3D camera system um, that's um, shooting through a beam splitter and so just to kind of educate you on that, it's shooting through a mirror so that you have one camera that's shooting straight through and one camera that's reflecting through the mirror and shooting out. You know, good successful 3D is built on good successful 2D. You got to tell the story just as well. The, with all the technical prowess that Avatar is um, from a film as an end byproduct, the process of getting there is still old school. It's still pencil and paper, still clay. A lot of these maquettes that you see here were at one point regular clay. And we looked at different different lighting. So it's it's getting tactile with it. And when you're comfortable that it's working, then you have to make a yeah. transition into CG. And what you'll find is that it suddenly it, it suddenly doesn't work as well. And then you've got to get yourself back up to that that level in CG. But once you do then it can come alive. So we can art direct uh, while these guys are moving real time, Put the it environment's there. real time. We had simple things like rain just to give it, um, and you can see it's, it's, it's a rudimentary set. We used to, I used to call it the crayon version of the set where this package then went to Weta, where they took it to the final stage. Yeah. But this allowed Jim to get exactly what he wanted yeah. without eating up all of the, uh, the render times and all that. So what we have is a piece of equipment that basically can represent any piece of live action equipment you've ever seen uh, on a live action set. But again, it gets into technology and art and how they coexist. We made a, a specific attempt to not let technology drive the art and our artistic needs is what really drove the technology. And this was to, to create a, a, an interactive director centric uh, tactile experience for, for the actors and the director. So this is probably a, a great illustration of how valuable a process like this was to, was to us in the making of Avatar. Uh, the, the explosions and, and the amount of crowd and, and just the environment itself, the whole battle scene was shot in Motion Builder and it was really put together and discovered here. What I have, I think, is a, a fairly wide-ranging experience in language. And that allowed me to take a little bit of Persian grammar and include it in Navi in a certain form. And there's something in Navi that looks a little bit like something in Hebrew and something that looks a little bit like something in Chinese. 
So I got this book of images, and these are just um, pictures of many of the plants designed, well, all of the plants designed for the movie, many of which appear in the movie, and some of them are really, truly bizarre looking things. So that they would all play together in unison. The, the volume can only capture so many characters at a time. And so this is four tiles here. Some scenes, you know, required more tiles. We call them tile, each section of the mosaic that will eventually fill and populate the whole space. Okay, then we created some kind of a performance edit using everything that was captured and some preliminary animation from Weta. And you'll see, like, the crowd all in sync at this point with the landing. Avatar did a great job of showing the indigenous paradigm of connecting with nature, the interconnectedness, our responsibility to future generations. And those are some of, that's some of the solutions too. It's some of what we can do to support these communities is promote that worldview that the earth is sacred. We all, we can't destroy nature because it sustains us and that we are in this together and that the Amazon is important to us and the whole world. And so we all should take responsibility. I didn't want it to sound like a symphony orchestra, yet there were certain sections that I did use conventional symphony orchestra for. But most of it was a mixture of digitized indigenous instruments and digitized vocalizations. I would say two-thirds of it was digitized and one-third was real. I wanted to ask a question. Um, a story broke recently that Sigourney Weaver said Grace actually didn't die at the end of Avatar and that she would be back in sequels. Who said she died? Well, uh, so I was wondering, could you comment on that? What, so she didn't, she didn't die. Nobody dies in a science fiction movie. <laughs> <laughs>